Hello there guys and welcome back to 100% Chelsea for my review of the Chelsea vs Everton game. And we won the game 2-0. Got my prediction right, solid performance, clean sheet, great stuff, I'm very happy. But um, before actually getting into the review, like we've been saying over the last couple of days, um, we've set ourselves a sub-target of 45,000 subscribers by the end of September. And um, if we do reach that, one of our subscribers will win a signed Chelsea shirt, signed by a Chelsea player. So um, if you want a chance to win that, and you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you have, tell your friends about it, your Chelsea friends. And even if they're not Chelsea fans, tell them about it. Make them subscribe. You know, we'll very much appreciate it. And um, you get a chance of winning a signed shirt by a Chelsea player. So um, that's great. But getting into the review straight away, starting off with the lineup as usual. There was a few surprises in there, minor surprises, I'd say. Obviously, it was Thibaut Courtois and goal, Aspilicueta, David Luiz. And like I predicted, but wasn't exactly hoping for, Antonio Rüdiger is the third centre-back. Marcus Alonso and Victor Moses, the two wing-backs. And next on goal, the country midfield, it wasn't as I expected or as I predicted um, Timur Bakayoko. It was actually Fabregas. When people started saying it in my in my preview down in the comments section below, I kind of thought, yeah, that's probably going to happen, that. Probably going to give a bit of rest to Bakayoko again. Um, so, yeah, it was as Fabregas next on goal, Kante. And Pedro, like I predicted, came back to start on the left wing with William being on the right. And Morata getting his full home debut, starting his first game at Stamford Bridge. And, you know, generally, the whole of the first half was very good. We started off very well, created a fair few chances. No sitters at the beginning, but, um, you know, some decent chances. We played some very nice football. And then in the 27th minute, we made a 1-0 through Cesc Fabregas. And it was a very nice goal. I was very happy with it. Played it nicely down to the wing to William. We played it back to Murata, whose first time pass actually got blocked. Then it basically fell to him up in the air and he headed it into Cesc Fabregas' path. And, um... Fabregas took it first time with the outside of his right boot and put it into the far corner. Incredible finish that. Incredible. Like it does it didn't look all so great first time watching because it was just a very slow shot, but very, you know, precise. So Jordan Pickford just couldn't get there. But the way he took it first time with the outside of his foot was incredible. And you know, the sec the first half continued like it started, like it was before the goal. We played some nice football, created some half chances, some decent chances. Didn't make them stick, but then in the 40th minute, we made it 2-0 through Alvaro Morata, getting another goal at Stamford Bridge. Again, some really nice football. Everton then actually managed to clear the ball out as Piliqueta picked it up, I don't know, maybe 30, 35 yards outside the box. Put in a very nice cross, and Morata, um, who was just about onside, put it in with his head. Great goal and, you know, absolutely lovely. Good to see him scoring again. Obviously, Morata getting an assist and a goal in the first half already. And Everton were basically non-existent in the first half. You know, they had no chance on goal in the whole of the first half. Um, and getting straight into the second half, it basically started like the first half ended. Chelsea playing some nice football. But actually, Everton got their first real chance not long after the second half started. Um, when Rooney played a nice through ball to their striker, Sandro Ramirez. And you then had a shot um, from inside the box, but Rüdiger blocked it away, although I think it probably would have gone wide anyway. Then in the 59th minute, Pedro had a very, very good chance. And to be honest, he really should have made it 3-0 there. He won the ball back just outside the box and he took it inside the box, had a shot, but put it wide off the near post, which um, I don't really get why he didn't try to put it into the far corner. But, you know, we won, so don't really mind. And just a minute after, Moses had a really good chance where he really should have made it 3-0. It was basically 1-1 one -on -one with the keeper after being played through very nicely. And he just had his shot way too early. He just got inside the box and had a shot already when there was no defender around, basically. And he hit it straight at Everton keeper Jordan Pickford. So could have done better there. And after that, it looked like we took our foot off the gas a little bit. Um, you know, nothing much happened. Everton got a bit more possession. You know, basically dominated the whole thing until the 60th minute. Um, in the 75th minute, Bakayoko came on for Pedro. But we didn't actually go to a 3-5-2. We just put Fabregas basically out to the left wing slash the left number 10 position where Pedro started the game or played up until that point. And in the 77th minute, Bachuai came on for Morata. Basically took a foot off the gas even more. You know, it was just got a bit slow. You know, it wasn't much happening. We just played it around. Tried to make chances if, you know, if we could. But weren't too fussed about it. Rather keep the ball. But then um, Everton had a corner. You know, we cleared that. Everton got the ball back. And then they actually had their second real chance of the game. Um, in the 85th minute, you know, very late on, when Ashley Williams put a header wide after Sigurdsson cross. And um, basically, we just didn't play out our attacks well enough. And we didn't finish well enough in the second half. If we would have done, we could have scored like five, 
And Everton clearly gained some confidence through that and put us under more pressure towards the end of the game. That's why they got a few more half chances and chances towards the end of the game. But our defence, to be honest, held up very well, not allowing them many chances at all. And then in the 88th minute, Andreas Christensen came on for Victor versus obviously putting us Billy Quetta out on the right hand, um, on the right wing back position. Nothing much happened after that. So overall, very, very good game. A very, very good first half in particular. Some incredible football, like I said. Two very nice goals, solid at the back. And the second half, still nice football until the 60th minute, like I said, when we missed those two chances inside a minute. After that, like I said, we took our foot, up. We took our foot off the gas and um, let Everton back into the game a little bit more. But they only had one real chance before then and none in the first half, like I said. But all in all, very good performance. Although I have to admit, Everton didn't exactly make it very hard. I don't know what was wrong with them today, but they just didn't play very well. Like They, they, they didn't do anything. Yes, fair enough. Like I said in my preview, they played on Thursday night in a Europa League qualifier. So, you know, they had some travelling to do. I only got back to Liverpool on Friday and flew to London yesterday. So, you know, it was a bit stressful for them. I suppose they had to rotate a little bit, but still, I would have expected them to give us a bit more of a fight. But, you know, I'm going to take it. Solid win. Two goals, three points, clean sheet. Perfect. Talking about a few players more individually, not necessarily the best, but I thought the most important player for me for such a massive change in performance compared to the Burnley game was the return of Pedro. His urgency, his directness, his will to create and score, it just helped us so much. He gives so much urgency to the rest of the team as well. And like, you know, he just basically combines the midfield when we like try to play it like a bit nicer, you know, play it around with some nice football. He just combines that playing nice football to actually trying to score. It just combines that. Perfect sort of, there's Kante and there's Fabregas, then there's William and then there's Pedro and then there's another step forward, obviously Morata. There's like four different steps in that midfield to the striker and he's just that 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 link that we sometimes need, even when Hazard plays because Hazard doesn't do that all the time either. So Pedro is a very important player in my opinion. Obviously, we have to talk about Alvaro Morata. Very good full home debut, you know, scoring one, assisting the other, you know, great game. But especially at the beginning of the game, you could see that he still needs some time to actually properly gel with the team. Fair few times he made runs and no one played a pass. And then a few other times, the likes of David Luiz, Cesc Fabregas, Pedro or William played through balls to Morata and he just didn't make a run. He just stood there and was looking at them like, oh, you passed to me, sorry, you know, that way. So, um, you know, it will still take him some time to gel properly with the team. But after that, you know, he found into the game well, obviously got the assist, a nice assist with his head. And um, the goal, you know, took that very well as well. You know, he scored two goals for us now, didn't he? Both with the head. Assisted one with his head as well. Does he even need feet other than the run? Um, I mean, I prefer if he scored some more goals and with his feet as well. But for now, he's doing his job fine with his head. Um, it was actually a very funny shot of Alvaro Morata um, after he got subbed off, sitting in the dugout with an ice bag on his head. What? It's not even, like, I, you know, it was sunny, it's warm in London, but like, how on earth did he survive in Italy and Spain if he needs an ice bag in London? <laughs> I mean, unless he, you know, needed a cool bag to like, you know, because he headed the ball too much because he scored and his sister with his head. Uh, I don't know. But, you know, basically everyone was good. The whole midfield doing their jobs as well. And the defence was very solid. But a player that I want to talk about individually is Antonio Rüdiger. Because many Chelsea fans, including me, you know, basically before the game wanted Andreas Christensen to start and not um, Antonio Rüdiger. But Rüdiger had a very, very strong game, in my opinion. Very good tackles, good distribution, very good positioning. I can't fault him for anything. He didn't make a single mistake. He looked good. Would I still prefer Christensen? I don't really mind, to be honest. If they both play well, whatever Antonio wants, you know. Go with whoever you prefer. Because um, if they both do their job, I'm fine with either way. But yeah, that's really it from me. Leave me all of your thoughts down in the comment section below. Who was your man of the match? Is it Alvaro Morata? That's obviously the easy shout. Do you agree with me that Pedro gave us something different that we just always miss when he's not playing? Doesn't matter if it's Hazard and Willian or if it's Willian and, I don't know, Boga. We just miss that when Pedro is not on the pitch. Agree with me? Do you not? Let me know down in the comment section below. Leave a like if you did enjoy the video. Like I said in the beginning of the video, we're trying to hit 45,000 subscribers by the end of September. So um, if you help us reach that, if we do reach that target, one of our subscribers, and that's any one of our subscribers, will win a signed Chelsea shirt signed by a Chelsea player. So please help us reach that target. Tell your friends about it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Massively appreciate that. Click that button up here to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you guys for watching. Up the chills. Come on the chills. And I'll see you next time.